everybody. This is GRE Bytes. My name is Davis, an educator with 10 years of experience. And I'm Orion, founder of Stellar GRE. We're here to bring you your weekly bite-sized episode on GRE prep and grad school admissions. For more information, check us out at StellarGRE.com. So, Orion, today we are going to talk about, what, what do I want to ask you about? We're going to talk about the GMAT and that's the GRE. Right, that's right. So first, the difference between the GRE and GMAT. What is it? Okay, excellent. So this is a question. Should I take the GRE or should I take the GMAT? That Why don't you just, what, what does each stand for? What's GRE stand for? What does GMAT stand for? Now you put me on the spot. I think the GRE stands for Graduate Record Examination. Okay. And the GMAT stands for Graduate Management Assessment Test. I think that okay. that's correct. So management, so that's business. So GMAT's for business school. Well, that's what I'm getting at. That, that's okay. that's the, um, the stereotype about the GMAT that we're gonna discuss today. So. The question of whether or not we should take the GMAT or the GRE is a question anybody interested in applying to graduate business school is going to ask themselves at some point. And historically, the GMAT was the test to take. It was the only test that business schools accepted. Mm -hmm. And so the GMAT has long been associated exclusively with business school. What some people may or may not know is that about five years ago there was a huge sea change in graduate school admissions where suddenly functionally all the business schools in this country and certainly 100 percent of the top 25 ranked programs mm -hmm. decided to accept the gre or the gmat for business school administrations so now anyone wanting to go to business school actually has a choice that they didn't have before they can choose to take the gre or the gmat is well okay so so one or the other, not both, is there an advantage to taking, is there still preferential treatment towards one test or the other at most institutions? Excellent questions. You definitely don't want to take both. That doesn't, you don't get a gold star for doing that, and that sounds like just a path of pain. So <laughs> pick your poison, do the GRE or the GMAT. So the second question is one that I get often from students who seem to believe that there might still be some, let's say, residual preference for the GMAT over the GRE at business school admissions. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that that's true. I can say that if a graduate program says in their admissions materials that you can apply with either the GRE or the GMAT, they are not legally able to discriminate against students based on which test they decide to take. So they have to legally weigh those tests equally. Now, whether they do that in practice is is a question that I, I, I can't fully answer, but I know they're not supposed to. Let's, mm -hmm. let's put it that way. They're not mm -hmm. supposed to weight the GRE lighter or heavier than the GMAT in business school applications. Okay. Well, okay. So is there is there a pro? Like, is one test easier than the other? Are there pros to taking one test? compared to the other? I'm so glad you asked that question because that's really what we're talking about here. Which one should I take? And I'm gonna tell you that if you wanna to apply to business school, you should be taking the GRE. Okay, why? Well, well I mean, I'm a GRE test prep company. Well, <laughs> aside from the obvious. Yeah, so don't ask a barber if you need a haircut. Glad you so, said it, so I didn't have to. So, so take what I say with a grain of salt, but I'm gonna make, a, I think, a pretty strong case for why you should take the GRE over the GMAT. Um, first of all, I believe that the GRE is a slightly easier test than the GMAT. Okay. I don't think that the GRE is a walk in the park by any means. So even though the GRE is more generalized in terms of the knowledge base you, you're tested on and the GMAT, okay. is the GMAT more focused just on business practice? No, no. Okay, let me walk that back a little bit then. So the GMAT, like the GRE, is also an aptitude test, which means it okay. doesn't test specific knowledge. It's not like the GMAT is testing you knowledge about uh, loans or interest points, you know, things that are specific to the management. practice of business or management, etc. Um, it's very, very similar in terms of the content assessed to the GRE. The, the overlap, for example, in the quantitative sections of both tests is probably around 90%. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So they have far more in common than they have, um, you know, not in common. So uh, they're, they're both very similar aptitude tests. That said, I do believe that the GRE is slightly easier than the GMAT. And the reason for that is the, GR, the GRE has fewer questions that involve the use of logic. 
Okay. So there is a test question on the GMAT called data sufficiency, which can be very, very difficult for many students to, to, to attend to. Because besides knowing the quantitative facts and, and knowing the little test prep hacks, you also have to be able to use logic on the spot to, to deduce the answer. Mm -hmm. So we're putting an extra challenge on that type of question that doesn't usually exist on the GRE. In fact, there's like less than 3% of questions on the GRE involve some form of logic versus you know up to 40% on the GMAT. Mm -hmm. So the GMAT is slightly harder because you take the same material and you add this like logic Extra type component. of question. Exactly. So if you had like whatever, five, six types of question that you could reliably practice on the GRE, you're just adding a whole nother set of types of questions. Yes, this type of question the data sufficiency doesn't exist on the GRE, but it does exist on the GMAT. I think that because of that, the quantitative section on the GMAT is significantly harder than the quantitative section on the GRE. Mm -hmm. Okay, There's a second good reason why the GRE is a better test, because the, G the GMAT is good just for business school. The GRE is good for business school and like everything else. Mm -hmm. So unless you want to become either a lawyer or a medical doctor, and you're going to a post-secondary education, you're going to be taking the GRE. Mm -hmm. So if you want to apply to like a dual degree program, like an MBA MPP, Masters of Public Policy, mm -hmm. or an MBA MFA or something like that, you're going to be taking either both tests for both of those programs, which like I said, is not a very good idea, or you take the GRE for both. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Yeah. Or if you're like, I'm not sure if I want to take go to business school in three or five years, I might want to go to business school, but I might also want to go to um, a master's in psychology program, mm -hmm. or uh, I want to get my teaching certificate, or et cetera. Mm -hmm. If you take the GMAT now, you kind of get locked into certain admissions pathways that you don't with the GRE. So the GRE allows you to keep your options open when applying to grad school. Do they, do they, does each test have a similar time, uh, mm -hmm. like an expiration date on each one? Yeah, I think both are five years. Five years. Okay. And a lot of people that I've worked with take the GRE right out of undergrad. It's kind of like, you know, when you're doing the dishes and your, your hands are already wet and soapy and your wife just gives you another one to do. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. ah, I'm already doing tests and I'm already studying things. So like, what's one more test right now? And I think that's often a, a good idea. They, they're already in study mode, they take the GRE, and that score is good for five years. So even if they wanna take three to four years to get professional experience, which is a really excellent idea when applying for business school, mm -hmm. um, they already have a, a score in their back pocket based back from when they were active students. Right. Okay, and the third reason why I recommend the GRE over the GMAT is probably the most important reason of all, which is that I've done some research on the top 15 ranked business programs in the country. So like Harvard Business School, mm -hmm. uh, graduate um, G GSB at Stanford, uh, Haas at Berkeley, et cetera. And I've collected data on the median percentile scores of successful applicants at all of these programs for both the GMAT and the GRE. Mm -hmm. So these business schools are very good at publishing this kind of um, post-mortem data on their entering classes. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered is that in, in pretty much any given year in the last five years, you have to score higher on the GMAT to, to be, be competitive. This competitive at that program relative to the GRE mm -hmm. by a difference of nine percentile points, which wow. is huge. That is huge. That means that you can score a full nine percentile points lower on the GRE and remain just as competitive at those top business programs relative to the GMAT. And that's without having to master that harder logic-based. Correct. It's an easier test. test. It's more widely applicable. And you don't have to do as well on it to be as competitive at top programs relative to the GMAT. Was there, like, just, you know, to kind of play the other side, is there any reason that the GMAT would would be you know more beneficial i mean not that i can think of it's even more expensive oh no way what about the time how, how like is, is it similar in terms of its time it, commitment in terms of the, the the length of the actual test yeah i think that both tests are around four hours okay um i mean the gmat is just a little bit more expensive not not a lot but it is mm -hmm. a little bit more expensive 
Um, it's about, both tests are about four hours. You're gonna take probably between two and four months to prepare for the exam mm -hmm. because they test, as I say, very similar content. Yeah. Um, but the main kicker for me is that you don't have to perform as well on the GRE to remain competitive for the right. top business That's programs. Right. And that is hugely important because as we talked about in a previous episode, one of the main reasons why these standardized tests exist at all is to give grad programs a legally defensible way to reject otherwise qualified applicants. Mm -hmm. And if you're beneath the median for their six, uh, of their successful applicants, then, I mean, that's already a liability. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of this is to dodge this bullet so that we can get the rest of our application in front of the committee so that they can see, hey, we're a good fit. Remember, people get in because of goodness of fit. That's right. That's right. Well, that's super informative. Uh, thanks for sharing all that information. You're welcome. And everybody out there, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week for another bite-sized episode of GRE Bites. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss on a future episode, let us know at stellargre at gmail.com. And if you're interested in either GRE prep or grad school consulting, check us out at stellargre.com. Awesome. Talk to you soon. Thank you.